So do you want six kids? Yes, please. Okay, so we'd like to welcome you live to Fabric Chicks on um, Monday. It's going to be kind of crazy today because um, we are just um, trying to get ready to go out of town and all that good stuff. So, um, so if you want to operate that, Roger's still out. Um, I know you guys, that's one of the first questions you're going to ask. He's still out recovering from his knee surgery. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. So just on a side note, Christy just texted me a super fun beach quilting retreat. Um, so yes, Christy, if you're watching, go ahead and get information on that because that would be so much fun. Okay. I'm trying to get your comments on my phone so I can read those as we're going. Um, I know it's all kind of crazy. Hang on a second. Um, usually it pops up and says, you're live. No such luck. It says you're live on here. No, I know, but I'm trying oh. to get the comments on here. Oh, okay. okay, so hey, Linda ABC, check your, um, check your emails and then um, send me an email with your phone number because I was going to call you today, but we have no phone number for you on file. So, um, hey, Sue. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Diana. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Sandy. Um, hey, Sandy, I didn't forget about you. I have in your box, I have that needle guide. I'm not sure if you want me to send that to you because that's the only thing in your box. So let me know. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Diana and Beverly Ann. Um, so today's going to be kind of a different day. Well, not really. It's like every other day. Um, so I do have some goodies. I have a couple of um, new tools or products that I want to share with you. So as you know, if any of you have used any of the products I'm going to share with you and you have better ideas or you've experimented with them more, type that in because we need all the info we can get. Um, oh, I don't have bunny ears, Dorothy. I know. I should have. I should have. I'm just not that together. Um, okay, perfect, Sandy. Um, hey, Karen. So today I've got a customer who needs to know how to do binding. So I'm going to demo binding and I know it's a good refresher for all of you um, because a lot of times we don't do binding for a long period of time. So um, so it's just kind of a good refresher. Just pick dog up from Sir. Oh, Mo, I, is your dog okay? Um, did you send out my last two orders? Just checking. No, Sue, but I promise I'm not going to leave town until it's done. Um, it's going to be a late night trying to get everybody's orders out before I leave. Hey, Jane. Um, so anyway, so if you were on last week, you guys saw the liquid vinyl. So I just want to show I have not washed it yet, okay? So the liquid vinyl, it's a heat and bond product. It comes in a little jar like this. I have not used that much of it, so it can do quite a bit. So I've used that much. I've kind of experimented with it because I know you guys like to learn from my mistakes so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. So I have experimented with a regular brush and a foam brush, although I couldn't find the foam brush I used. So if, if I was gonna do a big placemats again or at the bottom of a tote bag, get a bigger foam brush. Um, I just don't know where mine disappeared to. But this, I tried it with a regular uh, paintbrush and I pretty much have ruined it because even though I cleaned it, it's still got a little bit of skunk in it. Um, so I would recommend going to the dollar store, getting the cheap um, foam brushes and using those. And then I did three different coats. So this is what it looks like with nothing on it. And then this is, and I haven't washed it yet because I want to show it to you one more time and then I'm going to take them all home and wash them tonight so that next time I talk to you, I can show you what it looks like. So this is with one coat. So it's, you can tell you could still wash it, but it, it's water resistant, but not waterproof. And then this one is with two coats. So you start to get kind of that shine that you would get from the vinyl. And then this one is three coats. So I'm just gonna say, if you've got a loose thread, um, I think on this one, I had a loose thread and I painted over it because I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I'd get to it later. Once you put the vinyl on, it seals everything in there. So make sure you get all your loose ends first. 
But this one definitely is water. You can feel it. It's going to be waterproof. Well, I hope. I'm going to wash them, so we'll see. Um, Sue asked, um, so can you wipe them with a damp cloth? Definitely. All of them you can wipe with a damp cloth. Um, but the ones with two or three coats, you're supposed to be able to put in the washing machine. So it's supposed to be really good for the bottom of tote bags or anything that you would use vinyl, like your, if you wanted to make a, that, that, remember we had the dog or cat food mat that we were putting real vinyl on? You could use this. Um, ooh, well, good luck, Mo. Um, very high maintenance as well as being high, Mo. Um, I know our animals nowadays are, are a lot more high maintenance than they were when I was a kid. Um, okay, perfect, Linda. Um, let's see. Um, our doggy's eyes spooky dilated. That is so freaky on my cats after surgeries. Ooh, Mo, that's a question for you. Um, could you use liquid vinyl inside a zipper bag to use for a makeup bag? Totally, Rondi. I think that that's kind of what it's for. So you could, um, especially if you sewed, um, if you put the vinyl on before you sew it up into a bag, it's going to be a lot easier to get it everywhere you need to get it. So yes, you could definitely use it on the inside of a makeup bag. Um, <laughs> oh goodness, you just never know what you're going to learn here at Fabric Chips. Um, well, and we know more about each other than we do about our family and, and everybody else in our lives. Um, cause we get together several times a week for this craziness. So the other thing, oh, look at this, this quilt here. I think I'm going to make this this weekend when I'm in Santa Cruz. Cause you know, I can't sit still and we've had this panel in the shop for a long time. So I think I'm just going to whip up a sample. So be ready to see that hopefully next week. So that will just give you something to think about. Um, and then what was the other thing I was going to show? The liquid vine. Oh, I was going to show you guys um, this. It is, look at the pretty colors that you get from, um, it's the foil. So there's like a copper, a rainbow, a purple. And then most of you have this kit already. It comes with the glitter pack and so all the fun glitters and the glue from um, Bone Ash Barrel. We interviewed her last week. Um, so I tried it, but I didn't read the direction, so it didn't work, of course. So I'm going to pack this and take it with me to, um, to Santa Cruz because I was going to bedazzle the Frida panel that we had the other day. So I put the glue on here and I can fill it, but it should be tacky. So I think that I did not shake the glue up because it kind of came out watery, not like, um, and I cut my tip too big. So don't cut your tip super big, cut just the very tip of it. That way I think you'll have more control of where you're putting it. So I know you girls like to learn from all my mistakes, but I am gonna play with it when I'm on vacation so that I'll be able to really have the real demo next week. Um, okay. Any questions? Oh, and if Mary Beattie's watching, I did get the, um, I did get my Juki working and I did put on a customer's binding with it. Um, okay. Let's see. Did I, uh, the panel is super pretty. Um, that's true. I see fabric chicks more than my own kids. I know because every, you know, it's like a standing appointment every week on Mondays and Wednesdays. Okay. So here's my, I'm doing a placemat for binding because, um, I know some of you need refreshers. I've got a gal who's rushing home. She just picked up the cutest little, um, I think it was a bee in my bonnet table runner. Um, so she just picked that up, but she couldn't remember how to do binding. So I'm going to show you. So this is the placemat. Remember you guys all got the, um, the curved pieced pattern in your orders a couple of weeks ago. So this was a panel and I use the curved piecing a lot just because it's easy and it gives it some interest. So I've already taken my um, binding and I've cut, I cut two and a quarter inch strips. If you're a perfectionist like Rita used to be, she cut one and seven eighths inch for her binding. Um, most people cut two and a half inch strips. 
I personally don't like the two and a half inch strips because it's like too, there's too much wiggle room. So I like my binding to fit tight. So I cut mine at two and a quarter. And then you're gonna iron it in half with the wrong sides together. So I just ironed it in half. Oh, first I sewed. So if you need to make your binding longer, here, let me show you that real quick. So I've got two strips here. So I feel like I'm in 4-H doing a demo. Um, so yeah. I've got two strips here and then I'm going to take the ends. I'm gonna line them up at a 45 degree angle like this. And so for some of you who like things to be done perfect, you would take your ruler and you would draw a line from this corner to this corner, right? And then you're gonna sew down that line. I'm just gonna eyeball it because in my world, it doesn't matter that much. And I can tell you, I haven't drawn a line on my binding in probably, I don't know, uh, 30 years. So I'm just gonna put my needle right at the tip here and you can take the camera off of there if you wanna get in close. So I'm just gonna take it off and I can kind of eyeball it and see that I'm pretty lined up sort of. And I'm just going to stitch it there. And then I would take this over. If I was at home, I would take it to my cutting table and I would cut a quarter inch, but I could eyeball that too because it's not brain surgery or anything important. So I'm gonna take this to my iron and I'm gonna iron it um, open because I want to um, spread out the bulk. So I would definitely iron that open like that. So that's how you attach your binding strips together. And then I've already ironed this in half so that you guys don't have to watch that. And I'm gonna um, just go right here. Hi, Cindy Shelley, how are you? Um, I'm just going to lay this. I'm going to leave a tail. So I'm going to start about this far down and you'll see why in a minute. Okay. Um, all right. So girls type in what you did for Easter yesterday. Did you guys all get together with your friends who cooked dinner? All that good stuff. How wide is your seam on that? A uh, quarter inch. And then I always sew with my needle in the down position. Well, not always, but I do if I'm thinking about it. So I always sew in the down position. That way when I'm wiggling around, it stays put. If you have your needle up, it, your whole quilt, especially if you've got a bigger quilt, the weight of it is gonna make it move around. So I sew with my needle in the down position so that it kind of gives me a third hand. And then I'm just gonna sew my quarter inch like this. And I'm gonna eyeball, some people mark it, but I'm gonna eyeball a quarter of an inch from the corner. So a quarter of an inch from the corner, I'm just gonna take a couple of stitches in the same spot. I'm gonna lift my needle up. I'm not even going to cut my thread. I'm just gonna pull it out like this and I'm gonna take it at a 45 degree and go back and I'm gonna finger press it and then I'm gonna bring it forward. Okay, I'm gonna show you that one more time. So here it is. I stopped a quarter of an inch from the end. So you can see that's a quarter of an inch-ish from the end. And I'm gonna just put it back like this and then pull it forward, okay? That's what's gonna make your really nice um, corners. And then you just start right at the edge of your quilt, of your whatever you're binding. And then I'm gonna sew with my needle in the down position. I'm gonna make sure everything's lined up. Some people pin it, but you don't necessarily need to take the time to do that. If you girls have any tricks on an easier way to do it, um, let me know. Um, Betsy, are you getting crazy weather in um, Colorado? We had sunny weather and then snowy weather. And then I'm just going to lift up my needle. I'm going to show you one more time because, well, I'm gonna show you three more times actually. So I'm gonna tight, just finger press it there and then pull it forward. And if it doesn't kind of line up exactly how you want it, force it to, okay? So I'm gonna make sure it's lined up here. I don't want it to be like, like that. So when I pull it over, it's not lined up in the back. I want it to line up perfectly. So just eyeball it and then pull it back over. All right, we're almost done. So if you're doing a big quilt, 
it will take you quite some time to get all of around it. But we're just doing this. And the tricky part is making the ends meet. Okay, so really you can get those placemats bound. If you've got some sitting, waiting for binding, you can just whip it out. And I think for most people, oops, this didn't get ironed very smoothly, but you don't really have to worry because it's gonna be in the um, seam. Okay, no morning. Cold mornings in the 20s and 30s, no snow for a while though. I think we're supposed to have a snowstorm today. Okay, so I did the same thing here on the corner and then I'm pulling it out. Um, oh, Rondi always uses her walking foot. So, Rondi, I have a walking foot. I've used it probably twice in my life. I am not a walking foot fan just because I don't have time for that. Mary Beatty, we're supposed to be getting snow again. And Mary Beatty, did you hear? I got the um, Juki. I sewed on a customer's king size. Um, binding with it. It would it purred like a kitty. It was beautiful. I want to take it with me on vacation so I can learn how to use it, except for it is ginormous. Um, the machine is huge. Rondi, I don't know why you would need a walking foot for this. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the... Um, Sandy uses her what? Oh my gosh, I don't know why you girls use your walking foot. I use mine too. Um, I don't use a walking foot for binding and it works fine. I know. I look at Christy hates her walking foot too. Um, Sherry went to her daughter's house and son in law's for Easter dinner. Um, oh, oh, I haven't been outside yet, Christy, but I think it's pretty windy here too. Um, you want to know if there's a Zoom class on Sunday, too. Yes. Now I see what I was doing wrong. Thank you, Linda. Or, Linda, um, I'm here for that. I'm here to show you how to do it the right way. But apparently, I'm not doing it the right way. Um, what movie did you see, Joyce? Because I think we're going to go to the movies this week while we're in Santa Cruz. Um, oh, Caroline made ham. Oh, that's lucky Every. I went to Phyllis's house for um, Thanksgiving and she did all of it. And she even put out the gold silverware and. Oh, Joyce, that's perfect. You can fold it over and finger press the line so that you can see it. Peggy, I have no doubt you made a fabulous dinner. Um, oh my gosh, that was so many classes. Um, are all my class four days a week? Huh? Wait, Linda, what do you mean? What do you mean, Linda? Or y'all are all my class four days a week? Oh my gosh, I don't think we see you four days a week. Only two, maybe three. Okay, maybe four, you're right. I don't know. It's hard to keep track of you girls. Okay, here's my project I have to take to Santa Cruz to experiment with. So when you're finished, you're going to, oh, I threw a rule, oh, here it is. Okay, so when you're finished, remember we left a tail. So you're gonna have your tail on both sides. So here's this, and I do think you're gonna do it however you learned. And I, oops, I was talking too much and I sewed too far. So I did not learn how to put my binding on with a walking foot. In fact, probably the first 15 years that I sewed or quilted, my girlfriend, Roberta, sewed all of my bindings on for me. So I did not have to learn how to sew a binding on until I was like 40. Um, okay, so here, oops, here's your long tail. You're gonna pull it back and fold it over like this. So it's gonna meet right here. Okay, so 
This was my tail that I started with. So I started sewing right here and I went all the way around. And then here is where I finished up with this tail. So I'm gonna fold it over and I'm gonna meet right here, okay? So it's meeting right there, but it's folded over. I haven't cut it yet. And then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna measure because I did mine two and a quarter. I'm gonna measure two and a quarter and cut it. If you do yours two and a half or three inches, you have to cut it however wide your binding is. So mine is at two and a quarter. So I'm gonna go one, two and a quarter. And I'm gonna do a shy two and a quarter, otherwise it'll be a little bit bulky, okay? So I'm just gonna cut it right there. I know that made so many of you nervous. And then I'm gonna take these two. Now see how they overlap like this? And in the olden days, you would iron this under like this, and then you would put this in here, and that would be your binding, okay? Which is a perfectly okay binding, except for you have a little bit of extra bulk. So the newest version that I have learned for like the last two decades is that you have this extra tail. You're going to take it like this and you're just going to match them up at a 45 degree angle. Okay. I'm going to cut this back a little bit so it folds over a little bit easier just because you're watching me. If you weren't watching me, I would not. I would just make it work. Okay. So. Once again, you're gonna take this side. Let me cut that one a little bit. Um, Cause it's hard to get the angle I think what, from the camera. So you're gonna take this one on your right and this one on your left and you're gonna fold them over like this and line them up in another 45 degree angle. And then I'm gonna pin them if I could find a pen. So did you guys have to cook and do the dishes or did somebody else do the dishes for you? Because I'm just saying Phyllis is a rock star. She cooked and she did the dishes. So all I had to do was show up and just eat until I was so full I had to roll out of there. And oh, she made me a gift. Okay, remind me to show them the chicken she made me. So, so here it is, it's folded like this, right? At a 45 degree angle here. And then you could finger press it here for the diagonal, or you could take your ruler and draw a line there if you're a little bit nervous, okay? And then you're going to take it to your machine and you're gonna sew it just like you did before, okay? So it's better to leave a bigger tail because then you can maneuver it easier. Um, and you're gonna stitch it by machine. So it's not like you've got to stitch it by hand, so don't worry. Then I'm gonna pull this little needle out, this pin out, and then I'm going to make sure it's laying flat still and I'm eyeballing it because I wanna hit that corner. And then I'm gonna pull out this pin here. I'm gonna trim it my quarter inch here. And then I'm gonna finger press it open so that I don't have too much bulk on one side. So if you're not ready to do binding right now, remember you can always go back and watch it on Facebook or on YouTube and it will show you. So mark down today as a day that you wanna go back and rewatch if you need to get a refresher for binding. And hopefully I did good. So we're gonna have it like this. And then I'm going to, so I would take it to the iron and iron it, except for that I don't wanna bore you guys and you're already having to watch this. And then, so see how it lays, it just meets up perfectly there. So. I think, I don't know, you might want a walking foot if you had um, more bulk. I don't know, for a binding, I don't think you need it. Okay. So that's it. So that's where it meets. It's going to fold over and that's what the binding is going to look like. So I'll hand stitch it down. If I wanted to do it by machine stitching, I would have put a flange on it, which is a little, a little extra piece of fabric. And then I would have stitched it in the ditch. But I personally don't like, um, I personally don't like to machine stitch bindings 
just because I like the clean look. So see how it's, um, it, this is the front side and then this is going to be the back side and I'll just hand stitch that down. Uh, not a whip stitch necessarily. I like it to look a little bit nicer than a whip stitch so you can't see it. Okay, let's see. What do you girls could use that liquid vinyl? Um, okay, let's see. Where did we leave off on comments? Um, oh gosh, there's so, you girls just keep talking. Um, I made a chocolate cake with homemade buttercream frosting, potato salad, and pork chops with Fritz. Ooh, that sounds delicious, Sue. Um, maybe the next time I'm in Lindsay, you should cook. Um, I know never let anybody know you can do something good because then you'll be responsible. Um, she, so Dorothy uses her walking foot for sewing minky together. And I, if I'm doing minky, I typically am on the long arm. So that secures it. So I don't have to use it there either. Um, I saw Co Coda and it was wonderful. CODA, is that a movie? Oh, fantastic. Oh, um, I would love to see that. I think I have to wait for Gracie though. Well, Gracie might, oh, Gracie's going with me. So yes. Okay, that's a good one, Joyce. My family's very casual. Paper plates to make it easy. Um, I'm going to tell you, Phyllis is not very casual. She had out the good china, the really, really good china. Um, yes, Sunday Zoom, of course. No. Oh. I'm sure your foot, your machine has a walking foot, Mary Beatty, but you might not have bought it because it is usually an additional attachment. But even if your machine doesn't have one, there's usually a generic one that will fit on your machine. Um, I don't, oh my God. <laughs> Mary Beatty, that does not surprise me at all. Um, she says, I don't know if my machine has a walking foot, but I don't know how to turn on the oven either. Um, yeah, no surprise there, Mary. Um, Okay, let's see, because my walking foot feeds the fabric more evenly when I sew on the binding. You, yeah, you won't get, sometimes I do get little puckers, but it really and truly, it doesn't bug me. Um, tomorrow morning, Mary, uh, I made two dozen eggs into deviled, ooh, that sounds good. That sounds really good, Sandy. Oh, Linda, that's a good one. I'm going to try that. Just tell them you I have a class so they leave you alone. Um, I'm going to try that. Um, I just like the way my walking foot makes the binding look. Um, does anyone know if the usual binding with... Okay, so this is Mary's question. Put in what your favorite with the binding is. Mm -hmm. Mary wants to know. Um, Two and a half for me. Okay. And it looks kind of like it's hit or miss, Mary Beatty. It does the two and a quarter. You do have to like make sure you get it wrapped tight. It's a really snug fit. Um, okay, let's see. I'm going to go cut a bias and do some binding. Um, Linda, ABC, you don't even have to cut it on the bias. I just cut regular strips. Bias binding, I think, is kind of something from the olden days. Some people still love it and some people still do it, but most people just cut two and a half or two and a quarter inch strips by the width of their fabric and sew them together. So unless you have a preference for bias binding, you don't have to do it that way. Okay, Linda? Um, let's see. Okay, I have prizes too, girls. I have prizes. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go back, Dorothy, I'm gonna write a note to scroll back um, for friction pins. Oh, my, the gift from Phyllis. Oh yeah, the gift from Phyllis. Okay, I'm writing a note so I can get, I can get this done. Hey, Lynn Jenkins, do you want me to mail your package or do you want me to save it for another time? Hey, Jeannie, it's good to see you. Oh my gosh, Um. okay. Thank you. So I think Mary Beattie, it's kind of hit or miss. You can do it either way. I would try it both ways, like on a placemat or something. 
so that you are committed to a king size quilt and see what your preference is because everybody has everybody likes it different that is true if you're going to do a curved binding you do want to do it you you almost have to do bias binding if you're doing curves like a scallop or something you would totally have to if it's like just a really gentle curve you don't necessarily have to do bias binding but definitely for scallops when you got to get down into those little v curves um oh my gosh sherry i've never even heard of people doing two and three quarters no, that's not true. In the olden days, people used to do big, big bindings because they liked the look of it kind of as like an outside border or some, it framed it if you cut a bigger uh, binding. But I haven't heard that in a long time. Oh my gosh, Diana uses the one and, th one and three quarter inch, but she uses the binder on her machine. I know, and she showed us on a Zoom, it looked super interesting. Um. Okay, let's see. I think I got all of your comments. Okay, I don't want to miss anybody. Um, okay, so that's how to do binding. I think we've covered everything. I'm going to wash the placemats and see how the vinyl holds up. And then, um, okay, so I have some drawings. I haven't, we haven't really cleaned up from um, the sale last week. So, um, so you know how it goes. Hey, Anna, how are you? Uh, Mary Beanie wants to know when you're coming home. Okay, so if you're new to watching, we put all of the giveaways in your basket. So flip around so they can see all their baskets. So all of the giveaways go in your baskets and it gets shipped when we ship your packages. So sometimes if you want us to hold your package because there's really not enough in it to make it worth shipping it, we can hold it. Um, we have some people that get paid once a week or once a month, so they want us to just ship on the last sale of the month so you just let us know and we'll try to do our best um oh good june it, you know what the mail system is so weird nowadays that um it's always good to hear that the package actually came okay so i have a, a calculator from moda it's also a mouse pad so i have sherry oops sherry and if you ever win something you don't really want, let me know and we can put it back and let somebody else have it. Because sometimes it's good things, sometimes it's not. Here's a panel that got miscut. So I'm leaving it all together in case there's pieces. You might want the words. It'd make a good, um, you could make several snack mats from it. And this panel has been discontinued. So you're the last lucky one to get it. Um, okay, so I've got Dorothy um, Thomas Reed. Dorothy Reed. Um, okay, I, I see I've got some questions there. I have to go pick up my Fabric Chicks package in my mailbox. Oh, okay. Um, oh, top secret notes. I wish I knew what it meant. Okay, then I've got some thread and I'm not gonna say the brand of it. I'm just gonna say that I don't like this brand. So I have a bunch of them. So you might wanna base with it. It actually is a good brand. It just is a little bit more linty than the what I prefer. So, um, and I, I'm a snob when it comes to thread. So, um, hey, Cindy Gygax, how are you? Hi, Sue. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna scroll for thread. If you really don't want that nice spool of thread, just put it in the comments and we'll give it to somebody else. So I've got Carolyn Gavernich. And if your package has already gone out, I'll just throw it in for the next time we ship to you um mary i am the shop is open i'm not here though oh that's a good idea so peggy says use thread magic with it and it won't gunk up your machine and be so linty so perfect i now i'm going to keep them all for myself peggy um oh <laughs> that's super cute dorothy she says um coffee puts the grin in grit it says so on her shirt um super cute well, now you can make some uh, snack mats for coffee. Okay, the next person I have is Linda ABC. Linda ABC. So if you don't want it to be linty, just um, run it through your thread magic. And if you need some thread magic, let me know. 
Are you going live on vacation? Hope Roger is comfortable. Um, Roger's fine. Um, yeah, he's going with us. All he has to do is sit in a chair. So he can sit in a chair at, uh, on the beach or he can sit in a chair at home. Uh, you know, the option is his. Okay, Betsy. And I think we only have one Betsy. Um, who knows at this point? Um, Lynn Jenkins. And if you need to know about thread magic, let me know, and then we'll do that on another um, on another Monday. Um, I, you know, Rondi, I kind of think you could be right. I don't know that thread magic helps with the lint. I haven't experimented with it. I do know that the lint to your threads will gunk up your machine. You'll have to clean them more. Um, but I mean, this thread's been around for thousands of years, so I'm sure it's not that. You got some of this really great thread, Lynn, that I'm talking about. Um, so it's up to you if you want it. I just have a hard time throwing anything away. Sue a cob, except for I know, Sue, it's going to be a hard habit to break, but we've been saying your name wrong forever. Um, so it's really Sue a cob, I think. Okay, here I've got some really fantastic one of a kind except for you probably have its matching siblings in your stash so here's one of a kind panels so if you want the bears type in bears and then look at we have a really cute little stuffed bear so that's the front and that's the back so if you want the bear just type in bear because it's going to take somebody special who wants the bear he really is super cute I think it's a Daisy Kingdom panel, but it would look super cute to stuff the bear and then to sew a cute little blanket up for a kid. That would be really a cute gift. So, um, okay, wait, oh, wait, wait. Okay, oh, oh, uh, okay. So Linda, Linda ABC, you want the panel bears? Do you want both of them? Do you want the stuffed one and the panel? Yes. I think you're on there first. Yes, she wants both. Okay. All right, sorry girls. I do still have some of these 2022 calendars if you want them. So if you want the 2022 calendar, okay, I've got it. Um, good thing Liz was looking out for you. I do have the 2022 calendars. I have like five of them left if you want them. I don't know how we ended up with them left. I think they went into people's baskets who never ordered anything. So when I cleaned out their baskets, I have these. So if you want them, just put in calendar. And then I have a, one of these calendars left that goes with the nose pattern, but I do not know where, um, I think we might be all sold out of that, but it's really nice calendar, except for it's for 2022. So, um, so if you want that, just let me know and we'll put that in your basket. All right, girls, so that is all I have for today. Um, let me know if there's anything you want me to demo on Wednesday because we're not going to be doing a sell. Otherwise, I will figure out the glitter paint and the foil and do a demo on that. Um, all right, we will see you on Wednesday. Um, well, Wednesday at 2 on Wild Wednesday. So tune in to Wild Wednesday at 2 and then tune in at 4 for the Fabric Chicks. All right. Um, it is Sue a code. It's the long O. It is spelled wrong phonetically. Should have a vowel on the. I know, Sue. For those of us who are hooked on phonics and dyslexic, you guys' names, uh, they, they stump us a lot. But I will get it right eventually, Sue. All right. Have a good. Um, hey, Terry. Thanks for joining us. But it's over now. Um, all right. So we will see you guys on Wednesday at 2 and Wednesday at 4. Have a great night. Get some sewing done. And let me know if you need a demo on anything. Bye.